Okay, so we looked at the uh, basic uh, stereological parameters and how to derive them and in this lecture we will look at some more parameters which we can derive from what we have already done. Okay, so we will call these as derived parameters. One of the last things that we were doing in the last lecture was uh, numerical density where there is a problem of uh, that we have two unknowns, we have the mean tangent diameter we do not know because we do not know the shape of the particle very often and uh, we also have to estimate of course the numerical density and the only measure that we can do on the two dimensional microstructure is the number of particles per unit area. But if we assume some shapes then we can arrive at a numerical density. So, let us first look at the first derived parameter then for numerical density and it will be under the assumption of constant size and shape of the particles. What the shape is if we are able to assume that then we can estimate number of particles per unit volume from a measure of number of particles per unit area. Under this assumption this is the first derived relation I can write that n v the number per unit volume is equal to 1 upon beta and is the multiplication factor to two measures n a and p sub p, n a is number of particles we observe on the two dimensional structure per unit area, this is raised to 3 by 2 and the point fraction raised to power half. The interesting thing about this measure is that we only have to do counting, here number of particles in the microstructure and here just the counting the number of points that fall inside those particles using a point grid. Now and beta is a shape measure, this is where, so this is a general expression if you have particles of constant size and shape and beta is a shape measure which is going to be function of uh, if, if I assume spherical particles then beta will have some value, if I assume cylindrical particles beta will have some value, ellipsoidal it will have another value and so on. So, if we are able to make an assumption on shape then this is uh, the kind of expression we can use. But here what I am going to do now is I am going to show you how to arrive at this expression from whatever we have done, we are not going to do anything new now, uh, just from those basic stereological relationship. So, I will do that on the board, if we are assuming that these particles are of constant size and shape which means all particles will have the C same mean tangent diameter, they would have the same volume okay. and one expression that I can write for this is a relationship between volume and the average particle area on the two dimensional section. So, I have for instance a microstructure, uh, a microstructural section and I will get depending on what kind of shape I have in the three dimensional structure, I will get particles of varying shape and they could also be for varying uh, size as well because even though particles are constant shape, constant size. I might get something very different. For example, if I have cylindrical particles of constant size and shape, if I section it, you can get a circle, you can get an ellipse, you can get a truncated ellipse if the section passes through one of the ends of the cylinder. cylinder. So, you will have uh, different shapes. We can get from here an average area of these particles. So, you measure the areas, take an average, so you get a bar. Now, for particles of constant size and shape, I can write the following expression for volume, which is a shape measure beta for the particular shape, the average profile cut to the power 3 by 2. Okay, this if I if you look at this expression this balances only the units, 
because a bar would be length square. So, to power 3 by 2 will make it length cube and hence a volume has to be length cube and beta is then a dimensionless shape measure. But how do I get this expression? I will just show you for a simple case of sphere and then this is applicable for any shape. So, if I <coughs> show this for a simple case of a sphere, you take a take a sphere of uh, diameter d. Suppose my sectioning plane, my 2D probe cuts the sphere at some location at some distance from the center of the sphere. So, this is my center and this uh, probe is at a distance x from the center and obviously, when this section cuts the sphere, it cuts it into a circle which will have <coughs> some radius and this radius will uh, vary as a function of distance at which the plane cuts the sphere. Now, what is the area that is cut out? Let us look at this. Area that is cut out is if this is r and this is clearly the radius of the sphere or half the diameter. So, the radius that is cut out can be written as d by 2 square minus x square. Hence, the area that cuts at a distance of x from the center becomes pi r square or pi times d by 2 square minus x square. Okay. Now, if you were to repeatedly cut this sphere by random sections, then what is going to be the average area and incident that is what you would get on a two dimensional microstructure. There is a repetitive cutting of large number of spheres, which is similar to repeatedly cutting one single sphere. So, average a, a section area then we can obtain by simply integrating from all possible values of x and x will vary from 0 to d by 2. So, you integrate to 0 to d by 2 a x d x and we also divide by d by 2 to get the average. <coughs> now, this would become 2 by d integral 0 to d by 2 and substitute for a x. So, pi term will come out and we would have d by 2 square minus x square d x. We just need to solve this integral. Okay. Solution to this integral is actually very simple and the final result that you will get uh, out of this uh, integration is uh, simply that the average section area is equal to uh, what you are going to get is uh, let me put this down pi by 6 d square. Okay. So, from this you will get average section area is pi by 6 d square. Okay. So, what is going to be beta here? Let us now find that. So, beta is equal to volume 
divided by a bar to power 3 by 2. Substitute this in this, write down the expression for volume. What is volume? Volume is pi by 6 d cube upon pi by 6 d square and this whole thing to power 3 by 2. So, you will see that the diameter will cancel out, you will get a dimensionless number. In fact, you would simply get 6 upon pi to power half. Okay. So, beta turns out to be a very simple expression for sphere. I can write this beta in another in an alternate way and this can be written like this that beta equals let me not cancel out the d's. Okay. If I do not cancel out the d's I can uh, I can write this uh, in the following manner that beta is equal to pi by 6 d cube divided by just from here pi by 6 to power 3 by 2 d cube. Let me multiply by d to power minus 3 by 2 and divide by d to power minus 3 by 2. Then this will become this would become then just a second let me get this uh, yeah so uh, th this uh, and this will cancel I can write this as the the top as d to power numerator as d to power 3 by 2 this pi by 6 I cancel with the bottom pi by 6 then at the bottom I am left with pi by 6 to power half and here I am left with d cube or d to power 3 by 2 which I can write like this d cube upon pi by 6 d cube to power half. Okay. Or I am just writing it like this and this subsequently and sorry this is also d to power 3 by 2. This I can then write as d cube upon and pi by 6 d cube is volume, pi by 6 d cube is volume. So, I write the volume term to power half. So, this is another expression for beta which in general now diameter d is actually the mean tangent diameter of the sphere for a general shape i can then write for beta as the mean tangent diameter cubed upon the volume of the shape to power half so, this becomes the general expression for any shape. Now, for example, it was a cylinder, then I would have been able to write uh, for a cylinder, I know what is the mean tangent diameter, I would put this, I know for the cylinder what is the volume. So, I would be able to write the shape measure for a cylinder, similarly for other shapes. So, now I know how volume I can relate with the section area, average section area through this shape measure beta. Now, how does that help me? Well, the next thing that I can write a few more uh, stereological relationships which I already know. I can write for example, for volume fraction 
if there were numerical density to be n v, all particles remember are having the same volume. So, n v times the volume of each particle would be nothing but simply the volume fraction of particles. Similarly, I can write what is the area fraction here? Area fraction would be number of particles per unit area here times what is the average area that gives me the area fraction. Okay. Now, take these equations and, and then let us substitute volume from here on the left hand side and substitute for average area on the right hand side. So, I will get volume fraction upon n v to be equal to beta times substitute for a bar which would be nothing but area fraction upon n a to power 3 by 2. Okay. So, I get now I am getting expressions in terms of measurable parameters okay, from the two dimensional microstructure. So, let us try to rearrange the terms in this, so that I get n v onto one side. So, I will get n v to be equal to the numerical density to be equal to 1 upon beta volume fraction times n a divided by area fraction to power 3 by 2. Now, you see if you look at area fraction and volume fraction, I can replace both of them by the measure point fraction. Okay. Volume fraction comes from area fraction and this can be measured using point fraction. Then n v would become 1 upon beta n a to power 3 by 2 divided by point fraction to power half. So, all I have to do if I can assume spherical particles, I just need to measure number of particles per unit area on the two dimensional section, get the point fraction and get beta which we have already shown for spheres. If, if I assume them to be spheres, beta is 6 by pi to power half just a number. Okay. So, this is a this is a uh, uh, equation which is very practical in determining the numerical density. Okay. So, this was one of the derived parameters uh, and if I look at some shapes, if you look at some of the shapes I have listed down in this table, let us say for a sphere. For each shape, I am also list, listing down a characteristic dimension, okay. so which completely defines uh, the shape. So, for a sphere, it is diameter d, volume is pi by 6 d cube, surface area is pi d square, mean tangent diameter is d, and the shape measure beta is 6 upon pi to power half, which is 1.382. If I look at a cylinder, now, cylinder will require two parameters length and radius. Okay. So, this is not one single shape just by saying cylinder is not enough. You will have to either say that length is somehow related to radius through some shape coefficient lambda, then you can say L is lambda r. Then, in terms of all of this, you will get your volume, surface area, mean tangent diameter. Uh, in terms of r and lambda and then the shape measure in terms of uh, in, in terms of simply lambda. So, it is a dimensionless 
uh, number. Here uh, you would use the expression for beta as the mean tangent diameter and the volume of the cylinder. Then for cube you, you can go through this octahedron shape is there. If you had hemispherical particles then this is the these are the expressions so these are the terms and the shape measure uh, shape measure is listed here as this. So, this is how the shape measure is calculated for all of these quantities ok. So, this was one uh, uh, parameter numerical density how we can tackle we will have to make some assumptions about shape. Let us look at some other derived parameters for grain size if I have to understand grain size of let us say first single phase polycrystalline materials 